<laughs> Mel, I want to get to it, man. Look, obviously we know the the offseason and, and all of the things that are happening in Jalen Carter's world. And I see you still have him going very highly. And I understand the specific team need for the Detroit Lions. But, Mel, with all of the things that happened, you had the pro day, obviously the stuff off the field. Why is he still this high? And tell the audience why you think Detroit is that team that is going to go get Jalen Carter. Yeah, Marcus, I'm about the sixth pick overall for the Detroit Lions. I want a player who is the number one guy on my board right now. Certainly on most boards, he's one or two of the guys like Todd McShay and Matt Miller and guys you speak to about their rating, rankings and where they have Jalen Carter right now. Uh, look at what he did after he came back from the ankle uh, and the knee injury. He was outstanding. Look what he did in 2021 with all that talent around him. He's a collapse the pocket guy. And for De Detroit with Aiden Hutchinson flying off the edge, getting sacked, he's intercepting three yeah. passes. He's wreaking havoc. Now you got Jalen Carter on a defense that was bad. But they've added C.J. Gardner-Johnson. They've added Manuel Mosley. They've added Cam Sutton. Mm -hmm. They've done good things in that secondary. You add Carter, all of a sudden that Lions offense, which was scoring points, now the defense gets better. Now they can roll into the playoffs for Dan Campbell. So I think it's six. You look at Warren Sapp went with 12. Laramie, Laramie Tunsil went 11th. And look what happened. And they were all way up at the top of the draft board and dropped because of the off-the-field concern. Go ahead, Teddy. Okay, Mellis. Okay, Mel, it's my turn to ask a question, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my former team because a couple years ago, the Patriots had a great young quarterback in Mac Jones his rookie year, but then last year, it didn't look like it. All right, the offense struggled, and I'm thinking draft comes around, Mel's got them taking some type of offensive player that can help them from the skill position, but you got them going defense. Talk about why you think the Patriots are going defense in the first round. I'll tell you, the draft doesn't end after the first round, and I think there's a lot of other receivers in this draft that you can get if you pass on the receivers early. And look at Joey Porter Jr., who's a press corner, heck of a football player with an attitude, helps in a division with Josh Allen and Tua. Maybe Aaron Rodgers coming in, it looks like, right? And all those other great quarterbacks in the AFC, you need these corners. To me, a receiver, you get a Josh Downs from North Carolina, heck of a slot receiver in the second round, a Jaden Reed, Michigan State, really good football player. I think they can find some guys now. Hey, they could take Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. He's a guy I really like. Had him sixth on the board back in August, had a hamstring, missed most of the years, just about all the year. He's going to be running tomorrow. Todd McShay says he's going to run 4 4 8. If he Ooh. does, and he's probably going to go, Teddy, to New England or right in that area. I projected him to run maybe a 4-5-5. Five, five. He runs under 4-5. And based on a great year he had in 2021, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba is going very high. And maybe to New England where you pick at 14. Yeah, again, we're going to have all the coverage of Ohio State's Pro Day tomorrow as you'll see Jackson Smith and Jigba. Of course, C.J. Stroud, two more conversation about him. I want to talk about the Ravens a little bit, Mel, because at 22nd overall, you have them taking Zay Flowers, the wide receiver out of Boston College. Love this guy. I actually think he's a little more versatile than some people have him when it comes to the next level. What's your thought there getting a weapon for Lamar, even though we don't exactly know what's going on with Lamar Jackson? Yeah, Laura, that's a tough one. I think when you look at Zay Flower, heck of a player. He's electric. But I think you look at Todd Monken, offensive coordinator coming in from Georgia, had been in the NFL. He's going to provide a passing offense. This team has not had that for the last few years. They have had no semblance of a pass offense. And their no quarterback's not on the same page with receivers, their routes. I didn't think they were even running routes. So, to me, now you're going to get that, and you need some receivers to do it. Rashad Bateman coming back from the injury. Listen, you look at what they can do with Zay Flowers. You said so versatile, so dynamic. It's a space game, getting the ball, and he will do so much damage after the catch. And he's got a great attitude. He's kind of, kind of a Raven mentality mm -hmm. Zay Flowers has. So, I just think the, the offense is going to be expanded. The, the passing game will emerge now, hopefully with Todd Monken as the new coordinator. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.